I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on solving linear systems. In just few videos, we have learned all the concepts about matrices, determinants, and also Kramer's rule to solve these equations. Now here is an excellent example which I have already taken in vectors, intersection of planes. So I have picked up the same example. So we have three planes here basically represented by these three equations and we will find if they do intersect, how do they intersect? And we'll use Kramer's rule to find the solution. You will actually notice that this is very efficient way of working. And uh, if your calculator is allowed, simple calculations, uh, just multiplications and subtractions to be done to get the answer. So let's see how to find the solution of uh, a linear system involving n variables and n equations. This time it is three variables and three equations. So the equations for you are 3x plus 8y plus 9z equals to minus 4, 10x plus 11y plus 12z equals to minus 4, 13x plus 14y minus 16z equals to 89. So the very first step is to write the coefficient matrix, right? So which is the coefficients on the left side which you see. We will actually replace that with the determinant to get the value. Okay? So, so what we do is we write the determinant to find the value. So the determinant representing the coefficient matrix is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and minus 16. So that is the determinant D which will go into the denominator. Perfect. Now, we also need to calculate the values for the determinant when we replace the x values by the given values on the right side. So we call this as D1. Okay, so let's write down what is D1 for us. So D1 for us is, we'll just replace all these x coefficients with minus 4, minus 4 and 89, correct? And keep, retain the other values which are 8, 11, 14 and uh, 9, 12 and minus 16, correct? Okay. Uh, the third, the second or the third determinant will be when we'll actually replace the y coefficients this time, retaining the others. So it is 7, 10 and 13 and we'll put minus 4, minus 4 and 89 as the coefficients of y and then retain the other values as such correct now the the last coefficient is d3 i'm just squeezing it in here since we have very limited space and i don't really want to run into pages so we have here 7 10 and 13 and we have 8 11 so with this example you will understand the method and i hope you'll adopt it in solving similar questions so we got all these determinants, right? We'll also see how to find the value of these determinants. So that is one thing. And the answer for us is basically, if I have to find the value of x, then the value of x basically is the ratio of d1 to d, right? And of course, d cannot be zero in this case to find a valid value, correct? So if this has a value, I mean, a valid point of intersection will get a result, right? So this is how we'll get x and the value of y will be d2 over d and value of z is going to be equal to d3 over d, right? That's it. So we have done the major job. Now what we need to do is pick up a calculator and then find the values of each determinant and substitute and get the answer. So let me get hold of a calculator now. So let me also explain how to find the value. Let's say, let's begin with D, right? So how, what we do is we select a row and a column. So we'll start with number seven, which is right there in the corner. And within brackets, we'll find this coefficient, right? So, so 11 times minus 16, I'll write 11 times minus 16, minus 14 times 12, right? That is how we work with determinants. So we get the value 
uh, this value and then with second we have to use the negative sign so I get negative 8 and now we'll isolate those two rows and columns and then multiply 10 with minus 16 let me write 160 and then 12 times 13 will take away right so 12 times 30 is that clear to you and then we'll do plus so alternately we use plus minus and plus that is a standard way of working with determinants and finding the value so with 9 it will be 10 times 14 which is 140 minus 13 times 11 times 11 correct now we will just figure out this value using calculator let's calculate the values so 7 within brackets we have a, a minus we'll do 11 within brackets we'll write minus 16 minus 14 times 12 bracket close then we have minus 8 times within brackets we have minus 160 uh, it's better to use the other minus sign otherwise it gives error so 160 minus 12 times 13 right and then we have bracket close plus 9 within brackets 140 minus 13 times 11 and then what do we get we get 93 as a result correct so so it's a simple calculation so let's do d1 now for d1 again we'll start with the first number right in the corner and that is the cofactors we'll find 11 times so it is again 11 times minus 16 okay and this gets multiplied 14 times 12 with a negative side okay and then we have 8 here negative sign so minus 4 times minus 16 so that becomes positive 89 times 12 okay plus 9 times minus 4 times 14 minus 11 times 89 okay let's calculate this value now so we get uh, we start with a negative 4 so we said negative 4 within brackets we have uh, 11 within brackets negative 16 minus 14 times 12 bracket close minus 8 within brackets we can write 4 times 16 minus 89 times 12 okay bracket close and then we have plus 9 and within brackets it is minus 4 times 14 take away 11 times 89 bracket close equals to what 93 we got the same number 93 so the x value is 1 do you get the idea so first step since the determinant of the whole matrix is non-zero we have a solution is that clear to you and we just found that this value for x will be 93 over 93 so so the x value is basically 1 is that clear to you so it is so simple right so okay so we'll continue you can actually pause the video now and calculate d2 and d3 substitute them and get the answer okay so d2 will be 7 times minus 4 times 16 so I'll just write 4 times 16 both positive okay and then 89 times 12 okay and then we have uh, we are calculating d2 minus 4 and then 10 times this which is minus 160 and then 12 times 13 okay and then we have the third uh, 9 times okay so 10 times 89 gives me 890 minus 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 becomes plus 4 times 13 so simplify if you can so d2 is so 7 times this that's correct but here we made a mistake this should be minus and minus and minus makes it plus correct so it is plus 4 times all this and now let's calculate so we have 7 within brackets 4 times 16 minus 89 times 12 bracket close plus 4 within brackets we have minus 160 minus 12 times 13 bracket close and then we have uh, plus 9 within brackets it is 890 
plus 4 times 13. Okay, so there are a lot of brackets involved. Well, we get one answer which is 186, correct? So if I substitute 186 here for y, what do we get? Let me do it here. So we'll write this as 186 divided by 93, and that goes two times. So the value of y is two. Do you get, get it right? So that is how you can kind of calculate. Let's calculate d3 now. So d3 will be uh, that seven times, let's rewrite. 7 times 11 times 89 minus minus 4 times uh, 14. So it becomes plus 4 times 14. And then we have negative 8. So sign alternates, okay? 10 times 89. This is 89, right? So 890 minus minus and minus becomes plus 4 times 13 okay and then minus 4 minus 4 times 10 times 14 is 140 minus 11 times 13 correct so that's what we need to calculate now so that gives you 7 within brackets 11 times 89 plus 4 times 14 bracket close minus 8 and within brackets, you get 890 plus 4 times 13, bracket close. And then you have minus 4 within brackets, 140 minus 11 times 13, bracket close, equals 2. So this time, we get a negative number, 279. Is that clear? So what you realize is that it's a simple calculation, right? So for z, we get 279 with a negative sign over 93. So what is that equal to? So that seems to be 3 times, right? So we get 3. So we get our solution. And the solution here is very clear. The, the point of intersection here is, is a point, right? So x value is 1, y value is 2, and z value is negative 3 get it negative 3 so that becomes the point of intersection so I hope you understand and appreciate how easily using Kramer's rule we can actually solve 3 by 3 or I mean 3 uh, uh, three equations with three unknowns as you have seen here and these equations correspond in our case for three planes and these planes are intersecting at a point so that is very interesting to note I hope you understand and appreciate. I'll encourage most of my students to follow this method and uh, solve your questions uh, much faster in the test paper. I hope that helps. Feel free to share my videos with, with your friends. If you like and subscribe to them, that'll be great. And keep posting your suggestions. Thanks a lot and all the best. So I hope you enjoyed the break. It was really wonderful outside with still sub-zero temperatures. But a lot of migratory birds have come and was very refreshing. Now let's begin. Let's continue.